Kia ora and welcome to CIO Leadership Live. I'm your host, Cathy O'Sullivan, editor for CIO New Zealand. My guest today is Elias Barda, Technology and Product Director at MediaWorks. Hello, Elias. How are you doing? Hi, Cathy. How are you? Good, good. Great to, great to chat to you again. And um, can you um, tell us a little bit more about your role and what your team at MediaWorks does? Sure. Look, I think um, a lot of people know MediaWorks <clears throat> is um, kind of a radio outdoor business now. Um, and we have nine, you know, radio brands across the country, the latest one being Today FM. We've also built a, um, an outdoor business, which is all the digital signage we have and the, and the outdoor signs that we have out on highways, freeways and certain points. Our team supports all of that. So I've got a kind of a broadcast uh, team that looks after transmission and engineering for our radio brands. We've got a group IT function that kind of looks after all the kind of hosting and user you know, uh, database, et cetera, all the core common IT services. Um, we have a product and digital delivery team that looks at our digital products and executing on those, like our Rover application, which is all our you know, on-demand and on, on iOS and Android capabilities for listening to our brands and our content. Um, and we also have a delivery function that looks at how we enable you know, certain issues in our business across the, across the breadth of everything that we do. And then you've got cyber and architecture, et cetera, you know, the standard pillars of technology across the board. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an ever changing landscape media and definitely has been impacted hugely by um, by digital technologies um, and the word transformation it's thrown around within organizations as, as if it's a given as if it's something easy to do, but you know you'll know it, it's, it's not actually an easy thing to do. So can you tell us how that approach has taken shape in your own career. Yeah, I think, look, um, sometimes transformation is often a misused term as well. Um, and, and it can be different things to different people. You know, um, I think um, uh, while it's it, it, it's not easy, full stop, whether you're evolving or really transforming, you know, and, and that spectrum of um, change across that, um, the cycles seem to be getting shorter today. It, it, it's not an easy thing but it's certainly not a given that it will be achieved, whatever it is you're trying to do, right? I think there's a fundamental piece around making sure that you understand what you're trying to do. You move forward on clear, concise um, outcomes, um, and it's not too broad in terms of what you're trying to achieve. So for our, like, I look at my career over many years and I've been in several industries, so military, aerospace, defense, um, uh, banking, financial services, government, you know, transport, as well as media. And the adage is still the same, like transformation can be mistermed, misused, and digital transformation combined can often be um, different things to different people, you know, so you need to be very clear and concise on what you're trying to achieve. And whether it's a small evolution about a capability that gives you an increased outcome, uh, improved revenue, improved um, uh, capability, or it's a you know, nuts and bolts changing of your entire business process or business uh, capability. Like, for example, recently we, we as a MediaWorks um, business, we sold our TV business. Now, that was actually a fairly hefty piece of strategic decision making and change. And you could call that a transformation that you're separating, you know, two core businesses. Uh, you could call building new capabilities that you do normally, like broadcasting TV and radio in a new way, say on digital platforms or cloud play out is a transformation. You know, at the heart of it is people and at the heart of, at the core of it is to make sure that that change um, is, is, is human centric, is customer centric and people first rather than the, the, the technologies and the underlying capabilities that they give you. So you've touched on this a little bit there, but you know, do you think there is ever a, a, a starting point to kick off a transformation journey? Um, are there any kind of key steps CIOs must take along the way? You mentioned people there, but is there is there anything else that you think is key to um, to you know to actually transforming? Yeah, I think look, you need to build a good story, and I think you know as a um, as a leader, as a, uh, whatever level you're at, you need to build a good story around what it is you're trying to implement and, and what sort of change you're trying to affect and make it very clear, you know, so it, it's very clear and concise around what it is you're, you're trying to achieve. And then part of that is to then bring the team and the organisation on the journey, right? I've been in you know, in organisations where people bring in strong leaders, you know, and there's a scorched earth policy around, well, 
you're either with this transformation or you're in the way, you know, and that works to a point sometimes, but often what happens is even if you achieve the summit and put the flag on the top of the hill, it's not sustainable long-term. Um, and I think if you can bring the organization with you, it's really fundamentally more sustainable over time. Uh, so, you know, that's a fairly key. And then you need to kind of answer the question around um, uh, the why, you know, why are we doing this? It doesn't make sense. You know, the how can be worked out by the teams that need to do it. Um, uh, but really the why needs to be quite compelling. Um, and, you know, I think they're the key things you need to really look at to, to evolve or transform, you know. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you mentioned the the power of a good story there. And, you know, in every story, there's always uh, challenges. And um, what are some of the kind of common roadblocks you've encountered when you've been um, involved in transforming an organization? And what are what are some of those challenges to that you, you can try and avoid along the way, if possible, because not everything you can overcome, of course? Yeah, it's, it's interesting dichotomy. So on the one hand, the pace of change is you know, people constantly talk and, 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 and mention today is just accelerating. You know, whether it's exponential or linear or whatever, it's getting faster. But humans have been the same uh, animals for at least 300,000 years, right? So the, the, the key thing to understand is what is the change that is required from a people perspective in your organization? And often I, I use the analogy of like, you can see an iceberg, you can see the tip of the iceberg, right? Which is the change you think that you're gonna affect. But the berg, which is, you know, three quarters to 80% of it is under the water that you don't see. That's the enterprise uh, culture, legacy, the way things are done. And I've seen organizations where they'll spin off a new digital capability, which is addressing that sort of tip of the, um, uh, what you can see. Uh, and then it, it's the enterprise, which is the berg, you know, and, and and often that transformation doesn't work because it hasn't taken the enterprise with it. So I think that's a fundamental piece, which is really to make sure that you move the enterprise holistically, it's, which is very hard to do. You know, it's not an easy thing to do, but it, that's where I think ultimate success prevails. Um, Absolutely. And all around that stakeholder engagement, right? You know, knowing who, who you're who you're talking to and who 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 you need to bring on that journey. And um, so Ilias, I'm I'm curious to get your view on whether you see transformation as just an ongoing development, or do you like to think of transformation as a project? It has milestones, it has a deadline, and you're done and you're on to the next one. Well, where where do you stand on that view of transformation? Oh, I think it's a continuum. I think I think um, businesses run and evolve and transform constantly, right? What you want to be really clear about is framing the outcomes and the um, capabilities you're trying to put in place, whether it's in a six month period, whether it's a quarter, whether it's a year, um, and you're mobilizing and focusing to achieve those outcomes in that period, right? You don't kind of get to the summit and then plant the flag and then say, right, well, that's it. We're going to retire now. You know, there's other summits to climb. There always will be. And it's a continuum in my mind, you know. Um, so you've got to be, you've got to pace yourself and the team and your organization, but you've got to, you know, tell that story as a continuum, I think. But celebrate yeah. the outcomes that you do get, you know, and focus on the outcomes so that they are tangible. So if something's ongoing, you need to have milestones and, and events along the way that, you know, you can achieve those outcomes and then keep going. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that impact on the team as well, because that's something that's coming up quite a lot is the impact of, of so much change on teams as well is, is definitely a real thing, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's um, that's a real real crux of it, which, which is like, um, and, and I take MediaWorks as a business, so we've had um, a constant change in the media sector. Media can be often the canary in the coal mine for the economy, you know, if things are going this way or that, it's quite a dynamic industry. But then we've had people in specific skill sets and teams that have been doing the same thing for 18 years. You know, and all of a sudden, like um, when we launched um, uh, the first cloud play out channels we had in, in New Zealand for Edge TV and Breeze TV, they were a fundamentally different way of doing broadcast. And that required skill set changes. It required some teams not being involved anymore and other teams doing more. So that's quite a scary change. Um, and really important to kind of take the people through it, um, you know, step by step. Not easy, but very, very important. 
Yeah, absolutely. As, as humans, we're primed to not want change, right? And look out for those threats all the time. So can you tell us, um, as um, technology and product um, director, in what ways do you influence and collaborate with the organization and, and its leadership team? Well, I think you have, a as a, as a kind of technology um, uh, lead, you have an obligation to, firstly, as any exec, as any leader, you need to forge relationships with your peers, with the um, board, et cetera, to be able to achieve the outcomes that you need. So that's building relationships around work, but also getting to know each other, you know, to work out how this person operates, how you operate, how that will work. You know, it's a different dynamic with different people, you know, just the, the beautiful nature of humans and their complexity, you know. Um, and so that's that's a key. But then I think you also have an obligation to kind of uh, communicate and educate, right? So communicate in terms of what's happening, what you're achieving, what you're not achieving, you know, how that's going to work, what the business really is trying to achieve. And that's a commercial lens and an acumen that you need to bring to the table. On the other side, you also, there's a real key around the art of what's possible, right? And I think, you know, technology is changing so much, we often kind of run down things like um, buzzwords like cloud and then blockchain and you know web 3.0 or whatever but really understanding hey these are really interesting technologies here's where we could apply them to our business and then educating that um, some of the business in terms of what could be achieved there right but your communication piece and your relationships are really key around making sure that you can take you know have a seat at the table and then take any sort of change that you agree forward or actually instigate some of the change as well yeah, that future focus is so important, isn't it? And, and just being that lens for, for the rest of the exec on, on, as you say, what could be possible um, with, with future technologies and, and, and the business. And, so and sometimes, you... sorry, um, sometimes it's also just communicating that, hey, you know what, we can't just go and buy that capability because they're not secure. They don't comply with standard capabilities that we would have in our grasp. So that's communicating what our standards and what our capabilities are and how we need to align new, new business or capabilities. So it's really important to have both. Yeah, the shiny thing is not always the best yes. thing for an organization. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, the role of um, CIO, Elias, it, it is evolving. You know, a lot of organizations may not even use the term CIO anymore. What do you think are some of the key um, attributes of a successful modern day CIO when it comes to leadership? Oh, I think it's, 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 as I said, leadership is kind of relatively constant, you know, which is you need to be able to um, have a clear view of where you're going, the hill that you're going to climb and be able to tell that story um, effectively and concisely and clearly, you know, I think um, uh, the, the, the way that articulation occurs um, is important, but also your understanding of human nature of what drives people, what drives teams is really, really fundamental. You're, you're, you're not just setting a direction, you're actually sometimes part psychologist, part motivator. You need to understand how people are driven to take them from where they are to where we need to go. And that's a hard thing to do. You know, like if you, if you like I was saying before, if you do the old scorched earth and have, you know, strong leadership and drive an organization, that works to a point, but it's not sustainable because you haven't taken, once you're gone, you know, you, you want the capability to keep going and the organization to keep going as they did. So bringing people forward, I think is really important and developing that capability and that buy-in, that is more sustainable whether you're there in the, sh in the long term or not, you know. Um, I also think that um, uh, your, your, your capability around how commercial, what sort of acumen you have around that is really important. There are lots of things we can do. And there are lots of great ideas that come in at the exec or at business level as well that are not commercially viable, for example, you know, and, and, and the latest technology is one thing. We seem to love running off and looking at new bits of gear and tech, but actually not understanding if that applies into organizations in a holistic way and gives you the outcomes that you need. Um, and there's been many, you know, in my career, many instances of where it's been platform driven and you kind of put this platform in it and you're not going to um, uh, uh, tailor it or do anything to it, but there's a lack of understanding of the way the business is run and the way the teams in the business have actually been doing things. So there's an immediate mismatch there. So your role as a CIO, I think, is to really understand both, you know, and, and to me, technology is often the, the last bit, you know, it's understanding what is it in the business that needs to change around people, processes, you know, full, foremost, and be able to articulate that. 
Yeah, again, back to your point around it being, you know, people centered and, and human centered first and, and then mm. building out from there. So um, just uh, taking things in a different direction, looking at your own your own team, um, how are you creating a culture that really helps um, helps them thrive and grow and, 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 and hit those professional and, and personal goals? Yeah, I think uh, part of um, your role as a leader is to create a safe environment where people can develop and can feel, you know, in, um, dare I use the word empowered to kind of work out the how of, you know, what's required and, and achieve that. But I think also personally, like, and I speak at MediaWorks um, here, we've had staff that are, you know, to me, world class and experts in their field in many many fields, transmission, radio engineering, some of our IT teams as well. And over the last sort of 20 years, they haven't had that development, you know, given the nature of the business, the many, you know, mergers and acquisitions and, and, and you know, events that occurred. So what we've been try actively trying to do is to build some sort of career path. And the broader piece with our company is we're building a more cohesive people and culture plan and, and um, really focusing on building long-term career paths. So for technologists, and I'll tell you a story many years ago, like I went to Boeing. So people think progression, you know, is um, becoming a manager and then a exec, et cetera. But um, I was at Boeing many years ago and one of the, um, uh, the team and the exec I was talking to there um, uh, said to me, who do you think some of the highest paid people in our company are? And I said, well, you know, this layer and he said well that guy there on the shop floor has been there for 35 years and he's one of the highest paid because he's an expert in his field globally you know so they build career paths that are technically uh, specialized but actually deliver a key outcome to the business and the value has been so i think building that sort of capability for technical capabilities and organizations is really important and it's not easy to do you know yeah and um you know playing to their strengths right because that they, they they may not want to be a manager they may not want to be on the exact right but they mm. they love doing what they're doing and, and great that boeing has has that sense and, and good that you're looking at how you can um do that at meteorics as well and um, so looking at then um diversity in it there's mm -hmm. not really you know it is still quite male dominated it's yep. still quite homogenous what do you think, um, A, why do you think we don't have enough diversity in IT roles here? And B, what do you think can be done to attract more people to IT from, from different backgrounds that perhaps may not have considered IT before? I think part of it's societal. So I remember like I joined uh, the Australian Air Force many years ago. I was probably in the cohort of 80% male with 20% female on our team. There were a small number of female engineers. I think it's societal in that part of it is, which is the encouragement, the doors being opened and the ability of diverse, you know, um, people in our communities, whether they're women or ethnic backgrounds, being able to apply and go into those roles is one thing that's kind of societal. The other side of it is there's also things you can actively do to help foster that as well. So often, like I'll be looking for in the years past, I'll be looking for, say, an architect role, right? And I'll go to some agencies and, and you know, and the CVs I'll get will be 80, 90 percent male. So I'll have to actively ask them to say, look, send me a selection of CVs that are diverse. They may not have all of the attributes of the role, but give me strong, you know, here's some important ones as well. Give me strong leadership or give me strong lessons. Just let me see what's out there. And in, in one of the roles we had last year, we did do that. And we, we had a candidate that got to the final list as a result of that. Didn't have the, the core background in some of the skill sets, but had it the other important attributes as well. So I think you have to actively pursue that as well to help drive that. And then there's all, often like in industries, I don't know, people have differing views around quotas and targets to make sure that you get to a level and then it's self perpetuating like a lot of boards we have in, in um, Australia and New Zealand as well, you know, need more diversity and that's improving. So I think that there's a few factors and there's a few levers that we do have to help drive that forward. And I've seen, you know, in the last sort of 20 years of my career, it actively improving um, not as fast as people would like as well but it's getting there you know yeah 
and change takes time often yes. change takes time and and it is not the only industry as you say you know from your time in the navy there are other industries as well air force <laughs> air force sorry air force sorry <laughs> huge mistake Elias. Yeah. um so um looking back on your own career are there any um mistakes or that things that you've done that um have shaped you as a leader that you've really learned from you know stuffing up or or, or doing yeah, yeah. something the wrong way. Oh, there's there's always many. You know, I think if you look back, um, there's a couple that really stick out for me. So uh, part of it's speaking up, and part of it's not speaking up. There's a way and a way. So um, when I was younger, um, I could sense that you know, say a program wasn't quite going well, and I felt well, I didn't say anything. I thought the leadership had that in place, but actually, you didn't give them the benefit of the doubt around saying, look, I think this is about to happen or this isn't right for them to form that decision, either ignore or accept or, or do it. And then, you know, the flip side is I did speak up once. One of our, uh, my boss at the time was not doing what he, he should have been doing many years ago in the military, right? And so as a young, you know, so-and-so, I, I, I kind of walked in there and told him, you know, because everybody in the group knew that he wasn't doing certain things. And um, I just said he, he needs to know. So I told him, but I told him in a way that, you know, was quite confronting. And I didn't realize the subtlety of how you do this at that time, you know. And he just basically said to me, don't you tell me this. I've been here for 25 years, et cetera, et cetera. And really what he was saying is I should have paid a little bit more respect around how, how I did that. But, you know, I think speaking up was important. So there's two there's two things there, which is, yes, speak up, but do it. Do it in a good way, you know. And I can imagine in a military environment that it adds a whole other level, right, of, uh, yeah. of subtlety and, and, and things that you need to think about. Well, funnily enough, about a month later, we, we had a beer and, and he was he was actually, he said, look, I'm glad you did say it, just not the way you did it, you know, and, and we did work it through, but it was um, a kind of a reality check, good feedback, you know, that he did get. Um, but yeah, there's a way and a way, isn't there? Yeah. So then what's um what's the best career advice you've ever received um that's really stuck with you? I think um one of the key things, and I've had I've had some great um mentors and advice in the past as well. The the key thing's been around just trusting yourself and your judgment. You know, so there are times when you kind of doubt yourself and um and one of the, the best bits of advice I got was to say, look, listen to advice, hear it all digest it but trust your judgment you know at the end of the day you're there for a reason um and i think that's really important so you need to kind of you know take the inputs work it through but at the end of the day just really trust what you're you know you're telling yourself or hearing from yourself and for anyone that has aspirations to be you know um, a cio or you know a, a product and technology leader what 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 advice would you give them I think um, uh, don't um, don't stop. You know, if that's your aim, don't don't stop. If there, there are multiple parts to it, and I think uh, always have an inquisitive mind. Always look at you know uh, uh, how you're going um, in terms of your your career. And sometimes you have kind of it's a bit like a um, not quite a maze, but it can be that you hit a cul-de-sac in, in part of your career at times. But you know, if you know where you want to go and you're still consistent in it, there are ways to kind of you know come out of that and do something new. And and I think a good mentor always helps as well. I think that's really key, especially when you're younger. Definitely, definitely, the power of a good mentor. Mm. And and finally, Elias, can you tell us um, what's important to you in the months ahead? Well, I think, you know, I'm coming up to four and a bit years at MediaWorks and it's been an incredible amount of change that, that we've done. And, and the key thing on my mind in the next six months for us, we've had quite a few big things this year already, particularly with the launch of Today FM for us as a, as a brand, is just making sure that our team has the space, the recovery and the development moving forwards. Um, we have some tired people out there that have been non-stop for quite a while. So we're trying to make sure that we, we manage that. We're trying to build and recruit new capability in the market that we currently have in New Zealand and Australasia and the world, you know. Um, and so they're fairly key. Of course, we have large initiatives that are ongoing and some of those, you know, um, will be coming out in the next sort of um, uh, wee while. Uh, so it's really just making sure for me that the team, you know, is... Um, 
is fighting fit and, and does some of the team does get the rest that they need. So uh, Ilya Spardak, Technology and Product Director at MediaWorks, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Kathy.